Hey guys, this is Daniel Bryant. Today we're working inside of Adobe Photoshop and we're going to be working on a really cool technique that I've been seeing lately and that is intertwining text with your background objects. So basically what we're going to do is take this runner and we're going to put them inside and outside of text. So we're going to exclude some portions of the foreground and include portions of the text you're going to see. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is actually make our, the selection of our runner. So I'm going to select our quick selection tool and we're just going to make a quick selection right around our runner. And in this area here, if you don't already have a tablet, I would de definitely recommend buying a tablet or trying to see if you can get one from your job or wherever it is you're using Photoshop because it just makes things so much easier in making selections such as this. So we're making kind of a general selection here. And the cool thing here is as I use the selection tool, if I hold down my option or alt uh, key on PC, I can actually subtract the selection that I'm making. So yeah, as you can see here, portions that are a little bit tougher, like the shadow area here, uh, it just makes it so much easier for me using a tablet. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to select and we're going to select refine edge. And we're going to try to get all these details that we were missing. So I'm going to go ahead and select smart radius and bring up our radius just a little bit. We're going to see if we can't paint away some of these areas we don't need. And this works the same way. So by default, you have our brush option available. And if I hold down the option key, it actually subtracts from our selection. And we do want to do a little bit of subtracting, especially here in these areas that are kind of messy. And see that we get a, a good, clean selection here. And as you get better at this technique, you're going to start to notice that there's areas that are like, okay, to kind of keep in there. We can just take it out when uh, we get to our layer mask. And we're going to feather maybe by like one pixel, add a little bit of contrast and shift edge, maybe negative one. And now we're going to see if we can't paint in some of these areas that we don't want to keep. Okay, good. So we've got a nice good selection. We're going to output to new layer with layer mask. And you might say to yourself, well, hey, there's this big gray area here. We're going to fix that in just a second. And I'm going to show you how. So let's go ahead and output to new layer with new layer mask. Select OK. And now what we want to do is select our layer mask. And we're actually going to paint in the areas that we don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and select our layer mask. And if I hold down option and click on it, you can see here, this is what our layer mask looks like. Again, white uh, reveals, black hides. What we're going to do is select our brush tool and we're going to paint in black in the areas that we don't want to keep. So we could do it with just a normal blend mode, but what that's going to do is it's actually going to take out everything um, that we painted on our layer mask. So what we're going to do is actually select overlay. And what, and what that does is actually kind of multiply that black area. So we're going to paint over here and you're going to see it doesn't really cross over into that white area. It just kind of multiplies that black selection. So you can do the same thing with white as well. So we're just going to invert our uh, color picker here and set white as a foreground color. And as you can see, again, we're kind of multiplying our selection here. So now we're getting a much cleaner selection. And I think I called it key earlier. I think I'm getting a little too used to using After Effects here. And uh, let's try to delete that little area right in there too. So we're gonna change from overlay to normal. And I'm gonna see if I can't paint in this nose area so we can get a, a cleaner selection. All right, very nice. 
you know, paint his nose back in. All right, cool. So we've got a pretty good selection here. And now what, we, what I want to do is actually kind of grunge this up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and select our talent one more time. And we're going to go up to our menu and choose filter, camera raw filter. And I'm just going to add just a little bit more contrast. Add more clarity, bring it way up. Then we're going to decrease our saturation. Get a nice punchy look there. So now we're going to start working with our background and with the text. So the first thing I want to do is select a nice bold font. And uh, the one that I found to be my favorite for this technique is Futura Condensed Extra Bold. And so what I want to do is just write something really catchy. So in bold black text, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to write out here, legs burned comma feet eight comma and let's spell that right one first place exclamation point and we're just gonna move this text over to where we can see it and really start to adjust the spacing here so the text is kind of important here so you want to make sure it looks nice so all I'm gonna do is go in between the text letters and we're just gonna space things out just a little bit differently so if I hold down option and the right and left arrow keys, we can actually start to space our text so that it looks nice and neat. Or adjust the spacing. There we go. All right, so we've got something nice here. So the next thing I want to do is actually change the color of this text. So we want it to look very contrasty. So what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to make our background just a little bit darker. So if I hit shift delete, it's going to bring up our fill dialog box and let's go ahead and select the color that's kind of, it's still white, but it's kind of darker white where it can kind of fool the eyes. So a good place to start is maybe 70% gray and just press okay. And now our text is starting to pop off the page. Uh, just a little bit more. So next thing I want to do actually is add a gradient to this background. So I'm going to press G for our gradient tool and with black as our foreground color and our black to transparent option selected within our gradient, we're just going to drag it up from the bottom. But uh, just something that works. That, that actually works pretty well. And uh, now let's go ahead and change the color of our text too. So let's make it really pop off the page here. So let's change it to a color like, I don't know, like a turquoise type of color, something that really pops. Okay, so that's that's a lot better. Uh, let's go ahead and adjust our text just a little bit more. And actually what I'm gonna do too is, I think I'm gonna re remove this word place just so everything kind of stays together here. Let's change that to a period. Maybe this to a period as well, legs burned, feet ached, one first. Well, it just kind of depends on what you want to say with the ad. Let's go ahead and bring this to the middle. And I'm actually going to convert this into a smart object. So all I need to do is right click on our text layer. And we're going to select convert to smart object from the drop down menu. And uh, now what I want to do is duplicate that layer. So Command J or Control J on PC. And then we're just going to bring one of our smart object layers below our talent and leave one on top. So what that's going to do now is if we command click on our top layer of text, we're going to go ahead and set a layer mask uh, to kind of outline that text layer. So remember what we did earlier with our talent where we selected him out of the background and that black hid our talent underneath the layer mask and the white revealed our talent. Now that's basically we're doing the same thing on top of our text layer. Only this time where it works to our advantage is if we command click on our text on this text thumbnail. Now we can start to paint away portions of the text. So let's change our brush color to black. Select brush. I'm going to select our layer mask and now we can start to paint in portions of the talent from the background. 
and have him really stick out over our text. Now with a tablet, this is really easy to do because you can kind of just paint things away. But if you don't have a tablet, I'm going to show you a quick technique to, uh, to kind of work around that. Press Command D to remove our selection. And what I like to do is sometimes I'll select our marquee tool. And we're just going to select over the area that we want to keep. And then fill that in by hitting Option Delete or Command Delete, which Option Delete will fill in with your foreground color picker. And Command or Control Delete on PC will fill in with your foreground picker. So we want to fill in with black, which is our foreground uh, color. And now that just filled in that area right on top. So we really want to make it look like our athletes kind of sticking out above this text. So let's select maybe this feet area here. Do the same thing, option delete. And he's kind of in between the text here running. Maybe, uh, maybe grab this area here. And do the same thing, command D. And right here on this F portion, make it look like he's right in front of it as well. I want to look, make this look just a little bit grungier, a little bit more textured. So what I'm going to do is select our background layer. I'm going to select filter, noise, and add noise. I'm going to add just about maybe 3% is good. Uh, Gaussian and monochromatic will take away all the color from your noise. And uh, now we're starting to get a really good look. So for the last step, let's go ahead and add a shadow to our text. So I'm going to press Command J on our talent layer. We're just going to select that layer and hit Command Shift N to create a new layer. And we're going to call this shadow. Then we're going to select our background talent layer and our new uh, layer. And we're just going to hit Command E and merge them together. Now with this layer selected, I'm going to hit Command and select our thumbnail one more time to select the outline of our talent and just hit with our uh, default color picker selected option delete to fill it in with the foreground color picker. And I'm going to turn our top layer back on and with our layer selected with our shadow layer selected, just move our shadow layer ever so slightly. So what we're going to do is actually clip this layer into the text layer. So all I need to do to do that is hold down option or option key and click right between our shadow layer and our text layer, our background text layer. And what that does is clip that shadow layer inside of the text. So now what we're going to do is actually select filter blur and we're just going to blur that shadow just a little bit. So it looks like, like a shadow. We're going to about five pixels, select OK. And then we'll just lower the opacity just a little bit. Now, there, there are a couple problematic areas here. So you can see kind of here in this white area or right behind our talent, that white area is not supposed to be there. So we can actually go back to our layer mask that we created and paint it back in ever so slightly just to get things just a little bit more perfect if we wanted to. And we could do that either with uh, the technique that we learned with the overlay option and really start to paint things back in here. You see how it's kind of multiplying that edge. And the more we paint away, the more it multiplies. But uh, this is how you get the effect. And uh, I hope you're able to use this in your workflow for a really cool ad or some design ideas for yourself as well. Thanks, guys.